listen to the rhythms of our slanted voices. All living things have something in common. They fit their habitat. All plants and animals have specialised features that help them to survive in a particular environment. These features are called adaptations. An adaptation can be structural, like a long tail, sharp claws, or a pouch. An adaptation can be physiological, like producing venom, tolerating salty conditions, or conserving water in the desert. Adaptations can also be behavioural, like finding food when predators aren't around, avoiding the heat of the day or undertaking a seasonal migration. Adaptations make it more likely that a plant or animal will survive in a particular environment. Let's consider structural adaptations in more detail. Structural adaptations are physical characteristics of a plant or animal that increase their chances of survival in a particular environment. Like the thick fur of a polar bear that provides insulation in a cold place. Or the aerial roots of mangroves that provide air to parts of the plant that are underwater. And the large eyes of a nocturnal possum that provide excellent vision in the dark. Let's take a look at some structural adaptations in action. Rats that live in rivers might sound a little strange, but there is a native rodent that loves to swim. It's Rikali, also known as the water rat. This semi-aquatic Australian rodent is mostly nocturnal, so the best time to see them is after dark. While you may have seen Rikali at the zoo, you might not realise they are found in many of Australia's lakes and rivers. So how can Rikali live mainly in water? Well, they have adaptations that help them function in a semi-aquatic environment. Rikali are largely carnivorous and find most of their food in water. So they have to be able to swim to catch food. Having partially webbed feet means they're good at swimming. And being good at swimming means they're more likely to catch food in the water. Catching more food increases the likelihood of Rikali surviving. Rikali's webbed feet are a structural adaptation and their function is to help Rikali to swim. Mammals living in water lose body heat quicker than they would on land because water is a lot more thermally conductive than air. Rikali are mammals and in the water they're at risk of losing too much body heat. But Rikali has waterproof fur that helps keep water out and body heat in. This waterproofed fur is a structural adaptation and it functions by preventing excessive heat loss. So Rikali can spend time in the water without getting too cold. Let's consider the structural adaptations of another animal. This is a water-holding frog, nicknamed Rambo. Water-holding frogs live in parts of Australia that are unexpected. So how can Rambo survive in the desert? 
Well, Rambo and other water-holding frogs have adaptations that improve their function in a desert environment. When it's wet, the water-holding frog thrives. But when water dries up, they do something curious. They burrow underground. To get underground, water-holding frogs need to dig. Their hind feet have a specialised ridge called a metatarsal tubercle. The metatarsal tubercle is a structural adaptation and its function is digging burrows. Underground, it's cooler and there's sometimes moisture left in the soil. But eventually, this dries up too. So the water-holding frog does something remarkable. It builds a cocoon. Because even underground, the frog's permeable skin can still lose water by evaporation. A cocoon stops the water getting out. The water-holding frog can sit tight in its waterproof cocoon for years, whatever the conditions above ground. The cocoon is a structural adaptation and its function is to stop evaporative water loss. When the drought's finally over, water-holding frogs break out of their cocoons and get back to life above ground. Plants have structural adaptations too. Seagrasses are flowering plants that live underwater. And for plants, life's very different under the sea. Like other plants, seagrasses need carbon dioxide and oxygen to manufacture the energy required for life. Seagrasses grow in sediments that are very low in oxygen, or sometimes completely without oxygen. And this isn't a good place for a plant to be. As part of the photosynthetic process, oxygen is produced in the leaf, but it needs to travel down to the roots because the roots need oxygen to function. Seagrass leaves have internal air spaces called lacunae. Lacunae form networks of air spaces. The oxygen manufactured in the leaves travel to the roots through these networks via diffusion. The structural adaptation of internal air spaces increases the chance of seagrass roots getting enough oxygen. Lacunae also have another function. They help seagrasses to stay buoyant or to float. So the important things about structural adaptations are they have a key function, they can be internal or external, they can also have more than one function. All living things have structural adaptations that help them to survive in their environment. If they fit their habitat, there's a greater chance they'll thrive.